uh, we're going to assume they're wide receivers to the right. We're going that way. Inside foot's always up. That is critical because in the short passing game and your better teams that even run five step and sprint cup, etc., it's all on timing. So the inside foot always has to be up, such as an example on a, on a 20 or 30 slant. If you allow them to put the outside foot up, the receiver's got to take another extra step before you can get the instep, the outside instep down to break. Quarterback holds the ball, you can have some trouble. The idea is to be able to drop throw. So we allow no variance in that. The inside foot's always up, outside foot's always back. If Kyle would turn to the camera and explain the, the, uh, our new things that we got from these sprinting coaches, here's the stance. As he talks it through, Robbie will step up and do it. Here's the stance we're teaching now for the wideouts. Here's stance variance number one if they're with the defenders off of them. Anywhere from three yards to seven, eight to nine yards off. Here's the stance. Go ahead, Kyle. Okay, now what happened was we got this from uh, you can't hear me, Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Uh, what happened was we got this from our, uh, our speed coach we had at Mary Mesa High School. And what he talked about was we would first want to be up on our toes. We kick our back foot back about half a yard, okay? And we want to stand pretty tall. We don't want our shoulders over too far, okay? Because a lot of times you talked about your line when you're running. The big thing is with our hands. It's the hands that crank the feet. If you've ever tried to run and not crank your arms, you're not going to move very fast. Okay, so what happened was obviously you want your opposite arm up. Okay, you want to keep a good lock here in the elbow. I'm on my toes because what's going to happen is as I push off, I crank my arms right now, lock my front leg, and just start to just take off. So what you're doing is pushing off with both the toes. Okay, you don't want to be flat footed by any means. Okay, so you want to be up, elevated off your toes about half an inch or about a quarter of an inch. Now, the thing that you asked me yesterday, Coach Riker, about do we still roll off the front foot or not? And we talked, we just kicked through the back foot. Basically, yes, you're going to roll off of both of them. Push off of both toes. Yeah. And then when Kyle's done, I'll show you the big secret that a lot of guys do in, in the NFL, where you're going to get the best of both here by driving your knees and hips as you take off. You're still not going to get too far honkered over. It's, it's, kind, of a, it's kind of a push out, you know? Yeah, so it's just. Yes, do you see his knees? You drive both knees into the ground as you start to jack it. And so you're pushing off of both toes. And you've already got your arms here ready to run. And what your kids will find out too when they start here, they'll start to learn right when they crank it out of their brake. They'll be better out of their brakes in the route of keeping their arms cranked. Because they've been doing this all year just off of their first. So when they're cut, they'll still be here. I feel like the guy that holds the wire for the guys on the headsets at the NFL games. All right, so we're going to work that stance first now. Just like when the tight end was flexed, they first got to get lined up. DJ, if you'll come over here. Anytime after set, and attention to detail. Anytime after set, yes? Boom, up quick. It's just like he's snapping it to a quarterback, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but any, anytime after set, just do. All right. Okay, we'll take a look at Kyle first. Now, important, you come up. You first check the ball. Outside of you being official. Hand comes out, sir, I'm up. If I'm on the line of scrimmage, he's a slot, sir, I'm back. Hand signals, he'll say fine. Eyes come back to the ball, and then I look at the coverage. This will be important after a while, all right? If the guy's off, but I want to sneak a peek. Yes? Doug Brady, could you come on out? Could you come on out, Garen? So I want you off about seven or eight on his outside shoulder with your outside foot up. You come in here as an inside backer. Now, obviously, I've cut this down, our splits, so we can get it on the video. So. Here's an inside backer. Thinking ahead, this is going to be important later. As Kyle takes a look, all right, and then if you can come on out here. 
Coach Riker, the pride of Corvallis, Oregon. Just stand back here at about 11 to 12 as a free safety. Now this is congested, but you'll get the idea. Why they do this? Ball official, ball coverage. You've got to read where the windows of opportunity are going to be if you're on the primary side or a backside receiver. So the receiver is going to first take a look, the guy covered down on him. That's number one. All right. Say they were in some kind of a 40 front where the next guy in is an inside backer. Okay? He's two. All right? Free safety in this case is three. If you have any kind of a imagination, this forms some form of a triangle. So he's got to know in the passing game, especially short, if he's staying off, he's not the factor. The guy can shut the window is the inside linebacker. Plus your quarterbacks have to know that. He's not going to be the problem. He could be. But this is, this is coming up later from Steve Hagan from the Cleveland Browns on tape. So I want you to understand what the, the window is. All right? That is what the window is. So if Kyle was going to run like a deeper version of a hitch, he knows the window of opportunity has got to be between him and him. Do you understand? And we'll get to that later. Okay, now you guys can jog out. Now you guys are up one at a time. We're just going to work coming off easy. Anytime after I say set, they're going to roll over both feet at once, jack the knees down and punch, and just come off easy with their head and eyes up. Go through the whole thing. Ball, official. Sir, I'm up. Good, here we go. Set! Good. You're up, Robbie. Just nice and easy. Very important. Pure Homer Smith. Pure Homer Smith, yes? You guys that have been our quarterback stuff know what? Once a quarterback learns any drop, Right? From the offseason on, he'll never just come out and throw. He'll always do it off of his drop. Well, now we apply that to the wide receivers. As soon as they learn stance and get off, yes, they're always going to go ball, official, you know, ball, official, ball, check out the window and then roll out and start. We'll never just roll out and start. We want to make it as real as possible. Okay, here we go. Ball, official, ball, defense. Here we go. They're keying the back tip of the ball, the tip nearest the quarterback. That's an optical illusion. As the center snaps it, the tip nearest the quarterback appears to move before the front tip. All right, as soon as it moves, you're gone. Set! Good, Kyle's up. Sir, I'm up. Good. I'm back. Now, Kyle will step up by me. That's the new revised stance. Things we don't want based on what Kyle taught you. You're seeing this a ton. And I'll be honest with you, I don't get it. I'm seeing this a ton in college. And remember now, the defender's off. Yes, I'm seeing a ton of this. I don't get it. Nobody's going to come out sprinting like that. You know what I'm saying? Does anybody have any idea why they do that against an off defender? So go ahead and show that to them. So that is bozo no-no number one. Now turn to the camera and tell them why because it basically it doesn't have anything to do with sprinting. Right, it doesn't have anything to do with sprinting. The reason we start with our hands here is because right when I burst and take off, I can just start to crank it right now. From here, I have to drop my hands and start my movement, and I'm just I'm a split second slower. Because everything we've talked about over the years, right, all coaching is is what? Teaching kids to be efficient in movements. Yes? So that's bozo no-no, number one. Bozo no-no, number two. 
And up through the late 80s, this was even very common in the NFL. What Kyle's going to do, he's going to stand tall and his hands on his hips with his legs straight. You had guys run 4-4 four, four and the ball's high, you take a look at their feet, they go boom, boom, and they've never moved. So when I say, so I say go, just pick them up and put them down and then take off, okay? Don't worry about the snap. All, all you do is basically fall step and then go, okay, set, hit. So that's why you want to have some form of a slight bend, but you don't ever want to be straight, straight, straight up. Yes? Yes? Kyle will step up. Doug Brady will step in, please, of New Mexico State, San Diego Mesa College, and more importantly, Poway High School. Now we get a guy up in tight man. What he's going to do is, is split this guy in half, be sure I'm on side. I'm going to squat, and you're going to put your hands about here. Step up in there, Doug. Just like, like the flex tight end yesterday. This is really good, boy. The first guys I saw, saw adjusting this in their stance in college was at Notre Dame a couple of years ago. If I get tight man, I don't want to have a lot of bend because if I get too far forward, this guy can beat the crap out of you. So he, the big secret, be in that splinter stance again so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Coaching point, your hands are higher than where the hands of the bump and run corner are. Okay, here we go. All right, so I have a guy in my face. Now I'm going to step up again. Now, first thing, I'm going to keys the ball. Line up, key the ball to talk to the official. Sir, I'm up. All right, now, if he's in your face, you cannot read the tip of the ball because to be able to slap off, you cannot hit it if you can't see it. That's really undercoached. A lot of guys still have him key the ball. Then they get the crap beat out of them. And this is huge for you guys in high school. I can't speak for up in Oregon. What I've really noticed in high school, even people that are fairly effective throwing the ball, suddenly a team jumps in to bump and run, it's like those receivers are canceled. They're not good at getting off of stuff, and we'll be going over all that after a while. So do you see the difference? All right, step Robbie in, Kyle. First, back off at seven or eight. Take a look at his stance now with the number one defenders off of me, or soft. Good, now come up into bump and run. In bump and run, he can gather his feet more and stand higher. The key is, I'm still gonna have my hands alternated, but your hands are higher than his, so we can slap off later. Do you see the difference between off and bump and run? All righty, okay, go ahead and turn it off a second, Tim. Outs, off season, once you learn it, they can go ahead and do them. Yes, I'm gonna show you a, 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 a variety of catching drills later on tape, but these are the basic ones that we want to get taught at every level. Number one, assuming you're fairly accurate, the ball's above sternum height. I want to frame it up. Yes, you want the thumbs just under the eyes. Now, this is big. Same as blocking kicks. You want the thumbs here, not here. Here, almost forms a V, and you want to expand the pinkies. So if he throws above sternum height, I can frame it up. See there, I can look right through the picture frame. Then what's going to happen, you read the front tip of the football, just like a DB trying to intercept a ball. You got a key on the front tip. He's going to catch it, tuck it, and he's going to chin it. He's going to bring the chin down. If you'll give me the ball a second. As it comes in, yes, expand the pinkies, look through the frame. I'm going to catch it, tuck it, it's going to be the front tip, back tip high in the armpit, clamp it, and the whole time, chin's coming down. Exaggerate the chin for a count or two, throw it back to the quarterback. All right, so we'll go first with the ball above sternum height. Excellent. Great, and this is important how to explain them to them at any age level. High school guys and the pro guys, yes? Go ahead and throw. All great players exaggerate their technique in individual period because they think they're all great. Now, what Robbie did a minute ago, and I was able to see this because I used split vision, 
he allowed the ball way into him, you know, because remember, you got shoulder pads here sticking out. So you want to keep a break in the elbow so your arms act as a shock absorber. So if you're hitting the back, right, like on a hitch, because I'm expanded here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be able to give some suction here. Here we go. go. Catch it, tuck it, and chin it. Excellent. Catch it, chuck, catch it, tuck it, and chin it. Why we like to use the quarterback, it lets him warm up, then obviously he could do it off of a drop, like his last step of a drop or something. But the idea is quarterbacks tend to be a little bit more accurate than coaches do if you're trying to get specific things done. Okay, hold the ball, but leave the tape on. Test time. What about if the ball is low? Coaching point, Homer Smith. What do we tell them if, if the ball is low? Get your fingers under the ball. Most coaches teach get the pinkies together. That is true. But they don't emphasize getting the pinkies under the ball. You've already seen that on tape, so I'm not going to have them do that. This is really fun here. Quarterback, being the accurate man that he is, don't have to throw it hard, but what I want, I want the ball over his head, right? Overcoaching to read the front tip of the ball. This is huge. If the ball's early on the delivery, or I am late getting my head around on any route, by reading the front tip of the ball, you can catch the back half of the ball. So what they've got to do when they throw it, just anywhere over their head, the thing is going to happen. They've got to frame it up. The ball's a little high. If, kill him. Frame it up. The ball's a little high. We don't want to see your chin. We want to see your throat. That means your eyes are on the ball, right? Then what Kyle and Robbie have to do, they've got to key the front tip so hard, they've got to catch the back half of the ball catch the back half, I want him to hold it about a count of the back half, then I'm going to tuck it and chin it, throw it back to Doug. Okay, here we go. You got to catch the back half of the ball. Good. You can just throw it a little easier. But first. This is really a good, this is everyday thing. Be sure to then hold it out and then tuck it and then chin it. Yeah, if you see a screw up, you just turn it off and then that's the fuck. Turn off the tape. This is an everyday thing plus off season, yes? This is for the receivers, the quarterbacks, and the backs. What happens, you want to develop a feel for the ball, plus you want to de develop finger sensitivity and strength and strengthen the wrist, yes? So the first drill we're going to do is one hand drop and catch. The idea being we're going to start in the right hand first the majority of kids are right handed. They're holding the ball just like they could throw it because we also do this with the quarterback. The only difference is the quarterback's got to do it out of a stance, the receiver can just stand there. The idea is how quick you can let go and hang on for 30 seconds. So I'll say set, move. Here we go. So you want to shoot these two guys. Set. Move. One hand to drop and catch. Whoa, now put them on the left hand. Yeah. You should see a difference if they're right-handed. Set. Move. Whoa, that ball's a little slippery. Next, the snatch. 
Go ahead and give him the ball and step out. You step in. Now, I don't have to squat because I'm not a quarterback. Now that a snatch, they got to put some air on it and sink their hips. They got to snatch it. They got to snatch it. So you come up. They got to snatch it. Snatch it. So it's like almost the reverse of the claw. Yes? They got to give some ground. Eyes. Snatch it. Snatch it. As they get better, they'll figure out the further up the tip to go, the harder I can snatch it. Yes? Yes? Y'all set? Set. One hand snatch. Set. Hit. This is not easy. Same with the pro guys. They first do this, even their big hands, they'll, they'll drop it a lot. What this also does, if you take a look at their eyes, it's really forces you to keep your eyes on the front tip. So you're not just coaching hands think, and finger strength. Here, you're also coaching eyes. Okay, ho, ho. Now put the ball in the left hand, the one hand snatch. Set, move. Good, whoa. Rob flipped the ball to Doug, step out. Doug's in out, out of a quarterback stance. Sweet Georgia Brown tells you that's what kind of a sport. Thank you, Harlem Globetrotters. That's exactly what's going to happen here in 30 seconds. The only the difference is I start in a quarterback stance. You can stand fairly tall. They can do anything with this sucker they would like for 30 seconds. They, as they first do it, they'll start out slow. They go behind the back and their legs or their head. They can catch it between their legs. They can do it all. Yes? Yes. Here we go. On go, Harlem Globetrotters. Set. Hit. And whoa. Kyle will step out. You'll turn and face me. Doug, you'll step in. WWF, baby. Except we wrestled with a football. Now, this is important. So first start out right hand, right hand. So I'm going to have the ball here. I'm going to have the ball over here. Yes? The idea, and we'll just do this in slow, slow motion so nobody is going to win. You go back and forth on each other, trying to bring out the other guy's hand. Then sideways, down if you want. Idea, you're trying to wrestle for the ball. Right? Trying to get it out of the other guy's hand. Okay, here we go. Now start out easy at first and then we'll get after it in a minute. Right hand, both wrestling. Finger strength, hand strength, strength in the wrist. Here we go. Both wrestling, WWF. Set move. Good. Start to work him a little bit. Keep your eyes on your front tip. Oh, got him. All right. Put the ball in the left hand, left hand. Left hand, left hand. Go. Ball wrestling. All right. Okay, turn it off, Jim. Excellent, man. Here's what's transpired. Kyle was the wide out here. Robbie had been like the slot that's gone flat or speed turn out. Yes? What Kyle's got to learn to do, he's coming out here, he's going to push you. He's going to get about in here somewhere, right? And then he's going to stick it and turn around for the hitch. Right as you turn around, you see the ball thrown outside. You know they threw it to the slot. What you've got to determine is, if he's still off, go. You always want to get on, on to the top of the coverage to block. You don't want to block behind the ball. Yes? So he's got to determine when he sees that ball going there, He's going to snap and run, and you'll stay off on the first part of the drill. What he's going to do, then you can start to move towards the guy, but he'll do what he's got to do to get into 100. And then as soon as you keep coming to him, as soon as he can put his chin on you, just stop. He'll have his hands at the holsters. That's what you're going to do is hitch. As soon as you see it thrown outside of you, just snap and go. No one anticipating he's going to be breaking the, on that guy anyway to help out, right? Okay, here we go. Block after the catch. Now, Tim, is there any way you can get all these guys in at once? I have them right now. Yeah. Well, right now, but if you start, he's getting going deeper than he is now. 
No, what I'm saying is you see them throw it, then just shoot over to where Kyle's going, and you'll end up with, with these guys. You won't have to worry about the free anyway. Okay, but I would like Doug's a five-step drop. Now, don't, don't kill the guy with the ball. Okay, here, here we go. On Doug's call. Here we go. Just down, pause, and then strike. It's like a two-syllable word. Good. Come on back. Keep the tape going. Just like we talked about before, the difference between stock block and play side for the run, inside or outside run, is we want to get, if this was the corner, we want to get, hold still, we want to get 65-35 inside out, right? But on pass, we want to get into 100. Why we want to get in 100? The guy's going to drive on the intentions of the quarterback if he knows how to play at all, right? By forcing myself into 100, we teach the receivers to turn it up. If he starts to turn up straight outside, the guy's got to keep going. Then we just drive block him outside. He cuts it straight back up and still splits the free. If he comes inside, we get in a 100 punch and ride him down that we covered yesterday. So that's why we get into 100. That was excellent. Here's phase two. What you're going to do as soon as you see him start to throw, speed it up and just break on him, trying to go right through his shoulder blades. What Kyle's got to be disciplined enough to do, man, as he comes down here and sticks it, boom, right? He sees the ball thrown. As he turns for the corner, corner's going up the field. He's already by me. You're working over the top. You don't want to ever block behind the ball, so if he caught it, you got to work up and get into 100 on, on, on the free safety. Here we go. Blocking after the catch. First thing, just get him in the right place. Because you know all the stock blocking drills. Okay, here we go. On his count. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm just cutting it down because he's not a receiver and he's a quarterback. But if you're doing this drill, and you're doing a five-step draw. Do you want to cut? You want to cut it down just to do the drill? No. What coach asked me, which is good, I've cut it down on his route because Kyle's just demonstrating. But what he asked me is an excellent point. Do we want to cut down the depth of his route on the hitch for the sake of the drill? No. Now, what a lot of pro guys do. Thank you. Now we've added one. Come on up here. Count your steps. Count 13 steps out here. Stand there. He's out now. What, you're going to still drop. You're going to drop your count, and you're going to throw there. As soon as, that, as, soon as you t turn there, you have a choice. Stay off and outside or drive on it. Vision decision. You're still going over the top either way. Let's do that. Why they do this a lot in the NFL, which is smart, you're saving all that time, plus you're not tiring them out, plus you're getting the end result. Now, what I want you to do, phase two, what you're also doing, if this guy was on and out, what Robbie's going to do now, what don't we like that we talked about in the meetings? Ball's outside of him. We don't like him to try to frame it, except if it's right in front of you. Because if you try to frame it, your shoulder pad and your arm get in the way, and they can't see the ball. It's pinkies in. So what you're going to do is catch it, drop your hand and shoulder, and turn up. And then if Kyle's on the corner, take off, and however he gets on him, you're not going to just keep your chin on him, no hands. You break either under him straight up and avoid the free, or go straight up the sideline. So I want you staying off this time and over the top. OK, here we go. This is really good because you're saving time. You're not getting them pooped out and you're getting the end result taught. Go ahead, Doug. Yeah. Good decision. Safe. Try to stay in bounds so he can film it. What's going to happen is I'm going to be the corner, and I was in float. So I, so I ended up about here. Right? So Kyle, when he took when he first scanned, he saw it was something he might be too deep and might not be. 
He knows one thing. When he sees the ball thrown outside, as he turns, you just treat the under player like the third's corner. If he's already coming up, you want to get on, on top of the coverage. You don't want to try to get down on this guy. All right, so you'll still throw to him. Okay, let's give him a cover two look. You're just going to start backing off. All right, then as soon as you see him throw it here, just start coming up, trying to get basically head up to him. You're starting straight back. As you see him turn his shoulders that way, just melt your butt that way. So you're going to end up off the hash and more towards the middle. You're going to catch it, and then you're going to turn it up. Here we go. Good decision. Good. Good. Avoid me. Good decision. That's a good job. Arena football. We're going to get to run after the catch after a while, but let's introduce it now. Let me show you this. Get it lined up the same. What you don't want, we well, learned this years ago from Chuck Prefer when he coached the DBs at Georgia Tech. He used to drive them nuts. He's teaching DB drills, and his favorite term is he doesn't want his DBs playing the drill. In other words, they know what the drill is, like a half side and cover two. They have a receiver come in, work, go back to the hole. Then they'd have a guy throw it, and the corner would pick it, or the under player. Well, then sometimes they had a quarterback throw a difference so the halves would pick it. You know what I'm saying? So they just didn't play the drill. So what's going to happen, five-step drop, now you're going to throw the hitch. So what Kyle wants to do, catch it, chin it, just turn up and try to split wherever these halves guys are and play tag. What I'm going to do, I'm the receiver. I saw him throw inside of me. You got to turn and whirl and get on top of the nearest top guy anywhere he goes, which would be him. When he finally comes to, when you finally get in 100, he'll come to you, just shimmy up, end up with your chin under sternum, stare at his throat, and your hands in the holster, but you're not going to bust him. Okay, here we go. Don't play the drill. Quarterback and now throw the hitch. The underneath receiver's got to get on top. Here we go. You a little fired up, I hope, Rick? Yeah. Good decision. Way to get there, Robbie. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim. Shit. Hey, that's a great job. Great job. See, what your receivers have got to understand, it's, it isn't just on the run. You've heard this for years. I'm sure they bring this up at New Mexico State. Receivers have to understand the plays and run. Those stock blockers are the difference every time between a long run and a touchdown. I've never heard a receiver coach bring that up on the passing game. Big mistake. No, it's the same thing. He busted his ass and he got there. You are the reason our team just scored a touchdown. But, but isn't that a really neat thing to do? Now, we'll do it out all the various coverages and all that, which we'll do on the board later. Okay, turn it off, Tim. We're into basic ball security drills and run after the catch for the wide receivers, slots, tight ends. We also teach these drills to the backs and the quarterbacks. Yes? What's nice about your tape, you hear all those fans yelling and screaming? Because I'm Mike, you'll never hear it. It's unbelievable. So screw you people. Okay, eyes up. Pay attention, athletes. We're going to start with the ball in the right hand. You V the front tip. You never palm the ball. You take a hat in the game, it's coming off. You V the front tip. Put the back tip up in the rib cage, up high in the armpit. It feels weird. Then you clamp your arm down so that ball is secured. If you're not in traffic, even in the open field, you turn it up and you run after the catch, even if you are gone. I mean, you are so gone, every girl in the free world is going to want your phone number, right? When you're gone and you're sprinting, we want no air between the rib cage and the ball. This is a no-no. We want it clamped. If you're ever in traffic or getting ready to get hit, or you're ever having to spin out of a tackle, this is worth the price of admission here, man. I'm going to do it facing them, but you've seen this. In the old days, we taught the receivers and the backs, if they're in traffic, 
to bring the ball across their sternum. Take a look at what happens if you were coming in from behind. There's still room to uppercut and strip it. What we do now, this is huge, we do not now in traffic bring the ball across the sternum. Yes, we're going to bring it to the sternum again, but we're going to bring the front tip up. Now, if you can ask them, now there's no place to punch it out and still secure. Still got the free hand and shoulder to take the people on. So what you're going to do here, you're going to start out with high knees. This is machine gun. You're not in a race. The idea is not how fast, tell you what, we'll, we'll back it up to about here. It isn't how fast you can get from there. Tell you what, DJ, come out here if you could. We'll use you as a landmark. Hey, a human cone. <laughs> this is as far as I'm going. What you're going to do, you're going to start out on an easy jog. No traffic. Five points of pressure. Keep it pinned. Suddenly, I'm going to say traffic. When I say traffic, that is machine gun. Double time the knees, not how fast you can get to, how slow you can get to coach when I say machine gun. Rapid fire knees up and down. As you're doing that, bring the ball up across the sternum with the tip up. Yes? And when you're done, you just jog back and then you'll flip the ball to Doug and off we go. Okay, we'll go about a quarter speed. When I say go, he'll just take off like there's no, there's no traffic. When he hears traffic, he's got a machine gun on the knees, 100 miles an hour, it'll look like a piston. So he'll take off, suddenly he'll hear traffic. He's got to bring the, the front tip up to the sternum, machine gun his knees as high as he can. It should take him forever for when I say traffic to get past coach. It's up and down. Okay, here we go. Set. Hit. And traffic. Keep that elbow clamp so I don't want to see the ball. That's why I'm standing here. When they bring it up and squeeze it, I don't want to see any ball. I saw just a little ball there. Set. Move. And traffic. Outstanding. Just ate your old coach up on that one. Set. Move. And traffic. Elbow tighter. Bring that ball up. I can see the ball. Set. Move. And traffic. You don't double time your knees, Doug, until you hear traffic. It's like you're kicking through people and you're getting hit. Set. Move. And traffic. Doug's up to deem himself after his miserable effort. Set. Move. And traffic. Keep that elbow tight so I can't see the ball. Last time, set. Move. And traffic. Good. Put the ball on the left arm. Critical. Kind of the ball. Fired up. We never change the ball, even if you know how. Yes? The old days, trying to or tell your kids, don't let them listen to those announcers on TV. Well, you didn't change the ball, didn't keep it away from the defense. What I'm saying, if Doug ran an option as a quarterback and they took away the pitch and he tucked it up, say he put it in this arm. No, I'm not going to say option because that's wrong. Say we ran the midline because it's the only time it happened. Say we ran the midline option, the read tells me to keep jab up B, right? What happens? Here comes the free safety. The free's arcing inside out. I want to run and play tag. The ball stays in this arm. Free overruns it. I can cut it back. Even when I cut it back, you never change the ball. Never change the ball. We're coaching not to beat ourselves. Well, I didn't bring up the option. That would not happen because of where he should be going. All right, so what's going to happen? Ball's in the left hand. Say go. They just take off easy stride. Traffic, machine gun, really bring it up. Really bring it up and keep squeezing it. All right? Okay, here we go. Set. 
Move. And traffic. Don't stare at it. And just pump that free hand. Set. Move. And traffic. Set. Move. And traffic. Good. Ease it up. Kyle's up first to show him this. More and more, your better teams in the country aren't even stretching anymore. All they do work, though, is the neck every day. Yes? We never work the neck in the pregame. You're tiring the neck. The idea is the neck is strong now. Your better teams in the country don't work the neck in pregame. All right, now, here's what's going to happen. This is loosen them up. We're still warming up. Like on my tape, that guy from Clemson, still warming up in this drill. What you're getting into is ball security. Yes? Kyle's going to reach out and do lunges and touch what your fine guys are doing. The ball starts going all over the place, right? Every time he bends down on a lunge, you got to bring the ball up, right? Every time he steps out, it's straight. Every time he starts to touch down, ball's up. There's no such thing as going too slow here. Forward lunges. Kyle's up first. You can step out of there. I'll, I'll tell you when to stop. Set and go. I stay up. Elbow tighter. I don't want to be able to see the ball. When you go down, I don't want to be able to see the ball. And your elbow should be pinned as high to the rib cage as I can get. That's what I want. Good. Ease it up. Kyle jogging around. I'm up, Robbie. Robbie, put the ball in the left arm, Robbie. Put the ball in the left arm. Set. Lunge. What you do, you're really stretching the groin, but you're overcoaching ball skip. Whatever body position I'm in, if I'm in trouble, I'm bringing it up. It's really a beautiful thing. You getting something out of this, I hope, huh? You, owe, you guys are the Aggies, aren't you? Yes, sir. You owe Aggie, yeah? Turn off the tape a minute, please. The, the majority of our players are right-handed or left. Right. We want twice as much on lunges, twice as much on anything with the ball in the left hand. Set, go. Lunge. What's he doing wrong? Come on back. Come on back, little Sheba. He's just bringing it across. He's not bringing the front tip up. He's bringing it across, and I can still see air. It's up. It's up and across. Okay, set, go. See, he was just thinking ahead because he knows we're trying to make a training tape, so he thought it was important that it was wrong occasionally. Good. Come on back. Kyle's up. Put the ball in the left arm. Hey, face that way, Kyle. Undercoached. You see this in every game. Receivers, tight ends, and backs. They get hit, right? They're getting knocked around, and they run up, running backwards a couple of steps, and then they're getting pruned. That's when they don't protect the ball, and the ball gets stripped. Like receiver after he caught it, gets ping-ponged, and the backs do. Reverse lunges. He's going backwards. Ball on the left arm. Every time you come down, you got to protect it. Every time you straighten up, straighten it out. Nice and easy. We're still warming up in this drill. Set. Walk, reverse the eye step. That's a great job of the ball. Eye stay up. This is excellent. You're really getting a great stretch. That's enough. Somebody else? Now, obviously, we'd go about to 15 yards. Reverse lunges. Good. Always be in a position as a coach where I can see if I can see any of that ball. Yes? Outstanding. Aggie's up. Either arm, Aggie. Up to you, Ag. You're right handed, right? Yep. Heck yeah, I'm getting that ball to right hand. Uh. I think he's a true ambidextrous. Is he? Tim Clarks knows about being ambidextrous. How can you find out for sure which, which hand is really dominant? Let's turn off the tape. Come on. You give credit where credit's due. 
where this drill initially came from when Kyle was playing at San Diego Mesa College, their DBs and warm-ups. Getting stretched, but it applied to cover two a lot in terms of gaining some ground to be able to jam. The idea is they really wanted to stretch the groin, but tied into how you play. This is outstanding. Now you got to pay attention on this. Why we introduced it as we warm up in terms of ball security, right? Wherever your body is, you're in trouble. We want it up. So let's start the ball in the left arm. What he's going to do is spread his feet a mile. Yes, he's going to roll over the left quad and really sink and stretch. And then he'll step out and he'll bring the right foot and he'll step left, really sway and stretch. Ball up and you just keep doing this. This is a lateral groin stretch on your own. There's no such thing here as going too slow. Good. Robbie's up on that line. You're coming back, going to the right. Kyle, step out in front and make sure he's doing it right and coach him up. Good. I stay up. Your always, I stay up, because if I'm in traffic and I get out of it, I want to th be thinking ahead for where I'm thinking to split the defenders, yes? And that's excellent. Flip the ball to Doug. Doug, you start up here in this line. You're going back to the left. Now, put the ball in the right hand, then you make sure they alternate up. First, they can put the ball in the hand to the side of the groin stretch, but then we like it in the opposite hand because it feels a little bit more awkward, right? So you're going left, but the ball's in the right. OK, here we go. Nice sink. Take your time. Really get that stretch. Get that elbow tighter in the clamp. Excellent. Turn off the tape, guys. Jog over. Catch. Yes, those are people on the ground. He's just going to run through, from run through. Yes? Right when he gets the first bag, he knows there's traffic. People on the ground, he's going to high stern them it. Turn up the front tip, keep right on going. That ball stays clamped. Get over the bags, keep, keep right on going. So he'll start out straight. He'll start out straight until he's about here. And whoop! Just run through. OK, here we go. Set. Move. I don't want to see ball now. Turn that front tip up and squeeze that elbow. Set. Move. Good. Set. Move. Hold up. You've got to learn to Swiss cheese everything, yes? Same drill. Kyle's going to run through. What Kyle does, he's going to run through like he's a ball carrier. Suddenly, he's got to keep the tip up, but now he's a receiver. Ball's not even there yet, but I got it, right? He's going to have to run in here. He's going to have to, have to think another step ahead, right? And then he's going to come down, and he's going to sink and stick it on the right foot and not hesitate and fall. Just sink your hips and hold it, right? So what we're working is the sink before the break that you guys did so well yesterday. So we're getting two things done at once. This is not easy. Set. Move. There's a double clutch, but that isn't bad the first time. This is one of Kyle's favorite drills. You can ask him. Set. Move. But in this sweep, can you get, you get a couple things done at once? Oh, d d double clutch. The idea is you got to think a step ahead. So when I'm already here, I'm already, about, I'm already thinking about sinking the hips. So when I hit, it's just boom, and you can't fall forward. Set. Go. Stern of the ball. Oh, got him. This is really challenging. Put the ball in the left hand, but still sink on the right on, on, on the right foot. Now, when they do this, go easy at first. So go. Boy, he can dance. We don't want the double dance, so so go. Sure. Now, as soon as you get to the bags, bring that thing up, hold it up. So go. And stick it. There you go. Can you turn it off a minute? Okay, here we go. Double move. Running after the catch. 
Set. Move. Move. And trap. Good. Set. Move. Move. Good. Yeah, you guys stay on them if you don't see that ball part. Anytime they're going through, I'm in traffic. Now when I turn up, I'm not. Boop. Set. Move. Move. Turn and face the other way. Knee overs. Now it's the right knee. Set. Move, move. Just, just clear them. Good. Set. Set. Move, move. Remember, when you're in traffic, you got to bring it up. He, he never brought it up, but is he? St yeah. Now, when you take off, there's nothing I can straighten it out. And then we don't want any air. Now. If you want to condition with a purpose, when they burst, you can make it 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 yards if you have to. Okay, set. Set. Move. Move. Good. Tap. Tap, tap is still traffic, plus you can learn to get cooked feet. They take off. Whichever foot's in front's in front, whichever foot's in back's in back. They're going to come on the run, tap, tap, two feet down in the bag. Get off the bag. As soon as they hit, they're bouncing up in the next bag. Tap, 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 explode. As soon as they take off the first bag, they've got to bring the ball up and keep it there because they're in traffic. Plus, you're teaching quick feet. Okay, here we go. Set. Hit. Get both feet on that bag. Good. Get them down quick. Just one, move, one, one count and go? I'll say just go. Just take off whichever foot's in front's in front. So if they end up here, that one's up first and that one touches. Also, you don't want to hear anything. It's like they are shoeless. And on top of those bags are hot coals. So you want to be light. You don't want to hear anything. Light, quick feet. Ball discipline, turn that tip up because you're in traffic. Set. Go ahead. Set. In the words of the late Bob Cope, just good enough to get us beat. Just good enough to get us beat. Set. Go. Good. Set. Hit. Good. Can you turn it off a second, Tim? We'll start out with the ball in the left arm. You ever seen a bear in the woods? Ow, ow. The idea, you know we're never going to change the ball. Yes. So they're going to come out on a walk. They're going to take a few steps. Then what they're going to do, they're going to take the right foot. As it's going out in front, they've got to put the right hand way out in front of them with a the hand flat. But their eyes go up. As they're going down, they're going to bring it across because I'm, I'm in traffic. Then they pop back up. Walk, as soon as I start to go down, bring it across, hand out in front flat, that keeps your knee from touching, ball security, yes, the bear walk. Kyle's up first. Nice and easy, on your own, on you. And then kick the left foot up just like a donkey kick. Just like a donkey. Okay, good. Here we go. This happened the other day. That guy from, from Pitt. This happened that bowl game the other day. He got hit and he goes down, he hand taps, like, and everybody stopped, took off, scored a touchdown. Set. Walk. Good. Don't hesitate. It's not easy. Force your eyes back up so your knee doesn't touch. Okay, here we go. Set. Walk. The bear walk. Kyle's up. What's wrong with this drill? 
Clarence Shellman used to be the running back coach of the USC Trojans. Then he went to the Rams, now he's the running back coach of the Chargers. Hellacious ball security drill, but what's wrong with this? What happened, Kyle starts down in a modified, it's like a sprinter stance, right? Then you gotta kick your feet up in the air, change the ball, tap the other hand, kick your feet up in the air, tap your hand. What's wrong with that? We never change the ball. So we're gonna learn the donkey kick. This is, this takes severe athleticism. They're gonna get a good bend with their hand flat and their head out in front. When I say go, they gotta kick both their feet up as high as they can behind them. They can't come down on their knees, they just keep alternating the kick and this ball still stays in this arm and that tip still stays up. Stationary donkey kick, ball security. Whatever happens to your body, that ball is protected. Huh? Stand, right here. Yes. Now, if you start to move, if you could move forward and do it, you could go ahead. Whatever happens. Set. On you. We're still warming up in this drill. Good. If you gain a little ground, that's fine. Now, force your head up each time. Gear up, Robbie. You try to get them both up, but just do the best you can. Take a look at Kyle's effort. He wouldn't make it in eyes, right? Okay, here we go. On you. Yeah! Holy cow! Oh, mama! The king of the kickers! Best I've ever seen you keep going, son! Whoa, you're up a chance. To, you gotta. Whoa, he's fired up. Huh? Now. What will happen, you'll get, you'll make sure that ball's turning up to, up. Go ahead. Try not to flip all the way over, Vern. Good, turn it off. Strong with the left arm. You want to spend twice as much on the donkey. Whoa, twice as much, on, twice as much on the donkey. With the ball in the right arm and the left hand down, because most of you guys are right handed and not strong in the left arm. Okay, here we go. On you. On you. <laughs> so you can't do it. Keep that ball tight. Okay, turn it off. Right in the, the idea, if you're on this side, as, no, as you're, you're going all ball. So if, if you're first as he's flying by, you're trying to go like here and here and get it out and you turn around and do it. For you, you got to reach across, try to like take it down, knock it up, do something. Okay, here we go. Remember, turn it up. Turn it up. Now I can start straight here, but when I, when I feel I, there's a traffic problem, you got to get it up. Keep some semblance of a forward tilt. Don't slow down on your stride length. Don't cut down your stride length. Just get through there as fast as you can. Set. Right, excuse me, half speed. We're doing this half speed. Set. You're full speed with the hands and yank, so get a shot at it. Set down. As long as you can hang on to it, you can go ahead and hang on to it. Set. Same thing now, if you're forced to spin, you're already there, it's already protected. Excellent, set, hit. Good, one more time with Kyle, set, hit. Good, turn it off, swat him in the sternum in the ball area, the football area. You do not hit him in the face, you don't hit him in the eyes, you don't cut their legs out. So come through in slow motion, Kyle. Come through in slow mo. Basically, if you're here, I want it really cocked back, but you got to go there. <laughs> slow motion. For him, slow motion. But you got to now. I, now, hey, listen to me. Attention to detail, scouts. If you're over here, shit, I'm back here. And alternate. So it's like bing, 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 bing. So don't be like even with this guy. Stagger it. So if you're there, you're there, you're there, you're there. Hey, cock it back.
Unload, son. No, I'm told like this. Wow. Come on. Coaching points. First, you check out the ball security thing. Second, check your stride length. We don't you pussyfooting through memory lane. Don't cut down your stride length. Don't cut down your stride length. No balls. Running after the catch. Squat the football, not the balls. The football. Set. Don't hop. Pretty good first time. Beat the hell out of my second. He dropped his head. Now look at me. Receivers, remember this sink? As you're getting hit, sink your hips, but bold your neck. Always force your neck back into your shoulder pads. All right, that's huge. When you run after the catch in traffic. Here we go, set, hit. Good. Now, here comes the fun one. Line it up. Let's, let's hold up. Now, you all wind up, right? Rise, he comes to you, you go, each guy just goes, ah, but you don't even swing it. Because a lot of kids like stutter their feet. So cock it back for Rice coming in. <laughs> but, but you all stop. You didn't even swing it. Okay, here we go. Okay, Kyle's up. <laughs> I just wanted to stick my knee. This is full speed, Kyle. Now, you know the big secret here, yes? You'll learn a lot about your guys here. Here we go. When the coach teaches this one, all you check out is his. See if he stutters his feet. Not. No, get through. Get through memory lane, Kyle. This one will stick in your memory forever. He's ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. No! Oh, you pussy putting around. We'll bluff it. We'll bluff it. Then sometimes one guy will bluff, the other guy will beat the shit out of him, yes? Yes. Got to have him get that because he kind of was kind of hesitant in the middle, like he wasn't quite sure, yes? Can you turn it off a second about the DB and Kyle? Because I'll talk it through. This is off a 30 hitch. What most corners are taught if they're in cover three is go through the outside shoulder if they're on time. Not good, we go through shoulder blades, right? Kyle came up and scanned the coverage, saw a soft corner, free safety in the middle, linebacker in the window, but I'm gonna hit. So I know the linebacker's not gonna be a problem. And I know off, off game tape, that guy's been overcoached to go through my outside shoulder. Not good. So you take, take a little off so we can guarantee they can catch it. He'll take, Doug will take a three-step drop. Kyle will catch the ball, tuck it, chin it. He feels that he, off the game tape, he knows that guy favors going through his outside shoulder. He's going to tuck it, chin it, put it in the left hand, hand palm flat, turn up the field, straight up the field as you go flying by him to the outside. About half speed. The idea is you're trying to time it out so as you're driving he has just caught it where you're just getting ready to go through his outside shoulder and tackle him and he's going to spin up inside the field. Here we go. Run after the catch. Off a three step. Anytime. You timed that perfect, Robbie. You still got it, son. Turn off the tape. I've already covered the bear walk and the hand tap so this starts to tie in where we got this years ago. This is important, man. Back in the Terry Donahue era. Yes, UCLA. A.J. Kristoff is coaching the DBs. Any time you had outside leverage, man or zone, on a receiver, he had him go through the outside shoulder. Anytime you had inside technique, you went through the inside shoulder if you were on time. And they had success with that. Then J.J. Stokes comes along. And Coach Neuheisel's coaching the receiver. So you know they're coached up, right? So Stokes would scan, see the guy outside technique. He knew that guy's on time. He's going through his outside shoulder. He would do just what Kyle did, catch, tuck, hand drop, spin up the field. Then he saw him an off technique inside. He knew he was going to come through his what? Inside shoulder, catch, tuck hand tap and go up the boundary, they're flying over these guys and practice all the time. So that's when they went and were sold on our thing. DBs, if you're on time, go right through their shoulder blades on the hitch. So now if you're a little late and he starts to turn up and you don't have time to shimmy, I can tackle him. 
So this is huge here. Show them the same thing again. Here we go, three-step drop, guys going through my outside shoulder. I wanted you to be able to see this since you're paying good bucks. Now, all these other things we started doing, you get your ass worked off. Yeah, I know. Then on the man stuff tonight, you get to do some really good those martial arts things. All right, now, zoom in on Kyle and the DB. Get off at seven or eight, but you'd be on his inside shoulder, Robbie. Get back. All right, so now, he had played, now line up as, a, as the receiver. Inside? Yeah. You're now on his inside shoulder. Now, he's inside shoulder, eyes on the quarterback. Could be a zone or it could be off man, right? Could be a lot of things. Well, what happens, Kyle knows inside technique. He's taught on the hitch. The guy's on time. He's going to come through his inside shoulder. He's going to catch it, chin it, get the ball in the inside hand, force the key on the spin, man. Throw that hand upfield and make them put their hand flat and bend their knees. If you form a tripod with your hands on the spin, you tend not to bend your knees very much and you're giving him a hip target to still tackle. All right? Okay, here we go. He had an off technique. Now, I'm already out there to save time. Catch your steps off to seven. You back off of him inside now. What you're gonna do is slide back. I mean, pedal, act like you don't know shit from Shinola. Because you know what, on this, for us, it's a pick. But what you're going to do with the thing to do is just pedal out of there and then time it out how you did so nicely before, but come through his inside shoulder. Okay, here we go. Good. That's spinning up the boundary. You saw field spin, which is on your outline you'll get today. These are all in order. This line is the side. I'll tell you what. He said he can't film it from the past. Come up here a little bit. Come on up a little bit. You can stand about in, you can stand about here. The idea, you're not even gonna drop. You're gonna throw it easy to him where he can catch it and have time to turn up the sideline. Okay, come on over here to start, man. Tell you what, to, so we'll have reference. Start here, either here or here. This is the end of the route. I've already stuck him, right? They're gonna take off on a jog, and then coaches, don't throw it to me. They're gonna catch it. Remember, on the out, we wanna see pinkies in, except if the ball was thrown behind and I can frame it. Yes, the ball's outside, we don't wanna see this. You can see why? I can't see the ball, right? Like that guy did from UCLA all the time when Homer was trying to like talk him out of it. So they're gonna do this first, just on a jog, he'll throw it slightly ahead of you. The idea is, if I have time, I'm going to catch it, tuck it, hand tap, or just that hip and shoulder, stay in bounds, and run. Do not go out of bounds if you don't have to. Here we go. Now we're into run after the catch, but also concentration drills, plus being aware of where I am on the field. Here we go. Anytime. On you. No, you're not chasing them. Get the hell out of there. You're now the receiver, Vern. No, don't think. No, get outside the circle. Okay, here we go. Get his hand tap. The, where's the late Bob Cope? You got to assume the DB knows how to play, too. He's going to play inside technique if he has you into the boundary. You better drop and sink and rotate those hips. Here we go. He tripoded it too, I didn't like that. Turn off the tape, jog over and pick yourself. When the guy busts the throw, he's gonna chin it. He, just, he can't tuck it. He's gonna chin it, and then what we wanna see, re reduce that hip and shoulder so low that he can swish that broom on the ground at least three or four steps, and then straighten it up and stay in bounds. Tremendous for the hips. The use of the brooms. Okay, here we go. See, he's much better. See, if you can get that hip and shoulder, that guy go flying right over you, man. Does a good job, Kyle. <clears throat> oh, he never got it down. You know, I love those Swedish people, but they have no flexibility. Now, you take a look at Kyle's broom. 
Look at that cheap mother. Hey, they'll all do that. He's a veteran. No, you got to get it even there. You, you got the whole damn end down there. With your, <laughs> hell, you could take, pick up your leg and on a fire hide and still get your hip down. Okay, here we go. Oh, I got a bound! Holy Toledo, are you also Swedish? Oh, French, Sevilla, I'm sorry. The French! Don't tell them the story about the Turn off. Out, that's the Mexicans celebrating their victory over the French. Yeah, it's the only battle they ever won, but it was the French. And you know that everybody. Was it, was it the French? Everybody beats the French. Yes, it was. <laughs> okay, here we go. Also Mexican, right? Shut. Okay. Much better, out of boy Robbie. Way to make a comeback. The last time, Kyle, the game's on the line. Fourth and short. Okay, turn it off. Good, much better, all right. Don't tripod me. Make them throw that hand out as far as they can. It turns into a balance drill. Give them the ball, Brian. Yeah. yeah. There it is. Hey, turn it off, turn it off. Then what I need here, come here, Robbie's gonna be the free. I can cover three. So where we're gonna put you off at 11, somewhere back in here. What has happened, you've taken a three-step drop, so just walk it off. Yeah, now, come here. As he, as he put, and we'll make that ball the line of scrimmage so we can get some kind of uh, relativity here, right? Three-step drop. Now, listen, this is important talking scheme, you know, which isn't our thing here. If you run a three-step drop, how far can he go before he breaks? I don't know. You've got to take your fastest guy on the team and figure out how many steps Verdi can go before he has to stick it. Then everybody's forced into that. Because what's nice, if he runs 4-4 four, four and the guy behind him runs 5 flat, it'll, at least they all come into his throwing vision. So you're forcing him to push it against a soft corner. Now, with Kyle's speed, he's not going to do the whole route. But Kyle off a three-step drop, so Doug can just drop throw because the ball's already thrown before he even breaks. Don't throw it. So Kyle should be able to take it up, look at two, three, beyond one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and stick it. So you're going to stand here, Kyle. You're going to be like here, and then alternate, and then your feet will always be like that. And you're, I got your eyes on him. You're off. Now, just as soon as he catches it, yes, I want you coming on the run, and you're trying to get to his top shoulder, which is here and tag him. You're trying to tag him. All right? Corner only. You're going to learn how to play tag, run after the catch. Here's what's going to happen. Now, you can take a little off because this ain't a throwing drill. And this ain't the combine. So he can catch it. As soon as he catches and tucks it, I want you to get into this top shoulder. Kyle knows what. He already looked. He saw the cover three. Back up a little bit. So he saw the cover three. So if he had, on a slant, he wants to catch it, tuck it, turn up, and split the free in the corner. Do not keep running across the middle. You're going to get lit. And that will come in a minute. So we're first going to play tag on the corner. You're going to stay there as a visual. He's going to catch it. Chin it, tuck it, turn up. Here comes the corner for his top shoulder, and he's going to try to play tag, reduce that hip and shoulder, and then turn it right back up where he can't touch. Play tag. Yes? Then we'll incorporate the free in a minute. For now, Robbie, you're just going to stand there. What we would do, the quarterback would just go ahead and take his drop, so we're working drop and throws because we never throw stationary. Go ahead, Doug. NFL happens every day, too. Try to run before they catch it. You guys obviously talked to Tim, because you know he's going to have to edit that eventually. It's costing me. 20, 25 bucks an hour. You guys are killing me. Good, that's the way to play tag. Now we're going to add the free. Robbie? 
on you. All right. God did it. Line up. You already got the ball. No, I'm serious. We would prefer to throw it every time. I'm the DB. Come here, Vern. For a reason. Look. Okay, you're going to be here. Right. <laughs> However you want. And tuck it. Go. All right. My bad. You just want to give Doug a break. Take a knee. We, never, we don't ever send on our butt. I'm sure they taught you guys out of Aggie Land. Or is it like a picnic there? You guys just kind of lay out. <laughs> hey, man, tell me who's got the opium pipe. Hey, Coach Samuel, how are you? OK, here we go. As soon as he brings it in, go ahead and drive on him. Said, break. Good. Right there, double tag. Now, throw the ball again. Pressure's on Kyle. Negative. Probably beat the crap out of him, didn't he? Well, you can, because most video guys, not all, but they're either older or, or they're ultra young, because they don't pay him crap. OK, here we go. We're going to throw the ball now, see if Kyle can make a comeback. See what's nice of me. We ever get up and ever do a camp? See, we can do all this with your kids, yeah. which well, is already going through your sick mind. Well, actually, what's going through my sick mind is First thing, you got to get, get your coaches coached up first. I got to get the job. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm already counting on that. I, I already. Already called your AD basically and said, you know, I've still got some great contacts in Chicago, and if you don't give them the job, not one kneecap, both. All right, now, huge. Kyle, uh, jog over here and pick up a broom. What happens, get this on the tape, Tim. What happens now, teaching the play tag drill first out there with no brooms. Regardless if they're reducing hips or not good, then introduce the brooms. Don't introduce the brooms first, all right? Now we should see some rough athleticism here. Stay outside and off of them. Kyle's already out here. Now pay attention to me. Get this on the video. Now you're going to drop and fake a throw. So they can, he, you can time the drive, I can time the drive. Look at me. He has got, when he bluffs the throw, right? Right as he starts throwing out, Kyle starts walking. You start walking, you start walking. Now, as soon as you see him tuck his chin, speed it up, speed it up. The idea, he's got to beat him first with the broom swish. Here comes the free. I got to get the handle all the way down and split him if I have to. Then straighten it back up and run, yes? OK, here we go. The use of the brooms on, on how to play tag to reduce hips and shoulders to split those defenders and cover three. OK, here we go. Good. Woo! Kyle's up. This is tap, tap. Nope. You got one down. Happy feet. Good. There he is. You on him, son? Don't stay on that dot. Get up, get up at the top of the circle. Psst, psst. Good. You're up, Robbie. Hold still. Let's see how smart Robbie is. The deal is here. Throw it early. To, now he should. He doesn't have to tap, tap. He should drop his hand and turn up. You know what I'm saying, Vern? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a trick. It's a trick. Okay, here we go. Oh, you say about turn it off because he, he made the right decision, but first catch the agate. Okay, either either make him tap tap or throw it early so he's got time to tap and turn up. Good. Now this is huge. You're back, you're back here. You're going that way. This is the big one. They're already up the field, so here's Kyle. Just make some change to stagger their feet each time, right? They're not coming out of their stance. They're already going downfield. Most undercoached one of all. This is the back line in the end zone, right? So you're going to put air under it. Don't, but you're going to air under it. The idea is you, got, you don't look back for the ball on the up or the fade. You look up and back because the trajectory is coming down. You've got to find the front tip. 
you got to catch it, tap your feet in before you go off the back line of the end zone. We like doing these drills and like early outs. Plus, the thing I learned from a high school, not a college staff, pro staff, high school staff years ago, Sweetwater, back when they were awesome, they'd come out and do this stuff in early outs, and then they always ran their red zone game against bump and run right before stretch, so they'd go easy and then they'd speed it up. They worked the one-on-one -on -one in, the, in the red zone in early outs, so they always had it covered, which is pretty good. Okay, here we go. Tap before you go off the field on the back end of the goal line. Get them down quicker, don't be lazy. Again now, hey, as the coach, besides the feet, you want to occasionally go up to his eye, you want to see what? Eyes and chin catch the football. The eyes and the chin catch the football. Now you'll see this later on tape. And we're not going to do it here. This is like a seam shot. What happens on the fade, don't throw it. He's going to throw it over my outside shoulder. Yes, and you'll see this on the film later. You adjust to the ball with your head and your eyes. You do not shoot your head all around except as absolute last resort. This is what the great ones do. So allow me to be the guy that explains it to you. What happens? Don't throw it. What happens? It's on the fade. I look up and back, and it's going over my outside shoulder how it should. And because of our three dotted lines, I don't get close to the boundary, so he can do that. Yes? As it's going over my outside shoulder, you adjust first with your head and your eyes. You do not turn back around. You lose sight of the ball. Seconds the hands. Yes? Up and back, hands and pinkies follow the ball. Then we would tap and go in. But for now, we're just going straight up on the seam. Yes? And that is big, boy. Okay, here we go. You can already start halfway up the field to save time. Here we go. Yeah, just pop it in there. The idea is we're trying to tap them in before we go off the playing field. This is the back, that line's the back line of the end zone. You're out of bounds. <laughs> now, plus, I just threw a foot on you for 15. There you go. Yeah, you can... <laughs> okay, hold it up. <coughs> Playing tag. Go ahead and turn it on. We've already covered the slant. Now we're just from the other side. Now what we're going to do, they're going to come on a jog. They're going to use the proper stance, except that their hands can't be up, obviously. They're going to have the right foot up. Since we're on the left, it's 30. I should be able to take at least five steps here. So we'll start out. We're going to do this first on a, on a walk. One, two, three, four. Actually, it, it, it's going to be six. Shit, am I screwed up or what? I can't count. Yeah. Now, on four, though, you got to start to sink your hips, right? One, two, three, four. You're already coming down. Yes? Give me that jacket and step down on five. Right as you cut, I want you to get the broom on the ground. What this does. If you got a rolled up corner, you're able to get under them. This is not playing tag. This is overcoaching, reducing the hip on the break, on the slant against a rolled corner. Just go out and stand there as a rolled corner. You can do this on the inside void, too. Th that's correct. So, what he's going to do on a walk, he's going to look two through and beyond him. You'll just start to walk back as he does that. Yes? Mm -hmm. Then he's going to run the slant, just ducking it, reducing that broom. When you see him come on the slant, you just try to get to his top shoulder and walk. You're not going to run, and you won't be able to touch his, his left shoulder tricep. Here we go. Back up with Robbie. OK, 
Okay, the idea being the use of the broom is teaching body position against the rolled up corner. So when I do run the slant, he's trying to get his hands on me. If he's playing jam, I can still run the slant. Okay, here we go. This is on a walk. I'll just say, go ahead and call it. You'll bluff the throw. He still has to chin it. Good. Then he gets straight back up the field. What are you doing? You're trying to make a turn Just. You're playing tag on him, then straighten it up and go. Right. There is no, there isn't a free yet. Oh, you're just walking it through. Fetching. Will you walk out as a free? Actually, the halves. You're the halves guy. Now, go ahead and turn it on, Tim, if you didn't. So I'm only off about five of his outside shoulder. So Kyle's going to take it up on the slant. Yes. As he sticks it, he's going to reduce. He tucked it. Now he turns up. He avoids it. Here comes the halves. Reduce the other way. Here we go. So the use of the brooms is not just for playing tag, it's to overcoach what you do on the route, but then we get into play tag also. Don't worry if it doesn't time out because there ain't video on you anyway. Just let him get, surprised he breaks, fake a throw, so I want to see him still chin it. You getting fired up, I hope? See, you can be so cutting edge. When I was talking to Jerry Sullivan, he said the biggest thing he's seen in the NFL are receiver coaches that are coming in that can't coach a lick. I mean, they have no idea of coming up with a little neat thing, you know. Because when, see what's nice about this stuff, I was just talking to Garen and Rob to get this on the tape. What's nice about this stuff, it's just like when we have player meetings, yes? Your guys are brought up in multimedia stuff, and they've been exposed to some really good teachers, so you better have things that really pop their attention in meetings, right? Video of non-football things that tie in with play, trying to get taught, and overhead plates of different pictures and explain them or not have them explain them. Well, it's the same here. You've got to have cutting edge stuff to get your point across. And the better receiver coaches in the, in the country, these are the kind of things that they do. I don't want to blow our own horn here. It's probably somebody's been doing this since 1940. I have not seen a receiver coach yet anywhere ever use the, uh, the actual brooms. Okay, here we go. This is the slant. We're helping the route, and we're playing tag, all in the same drills. On a walk. You start to drive on him, has guy? Reduce the, good. Kyle's up. Huh? Keep closing that top shoulder. Okay, now we're going about half speed, Kyle, on the slant. Could be two, could be four high, could be four tough. Be sure to look too far behind him. Yes. Just get that stick down in front of him a second one. Rob, he's up. Give him a two half speed there. Good. Kyle's up. The over route, the over, really good against three or two, will be in three. So you get off, well, for you, about nine to ten. And what I want you to do is Kyle takes off, I just want you to start pedaling. Then when he breaks across the field, I want you to try to get to, try to squeeze to his top shoulder. All right? You're going to need to count your steps off. This is off a seven-step drop. All right? If you're a snail, you can only get it up to 18 before you break it across, right? So we teach it backwards. I've already pushed you. Come on, Kyle. I've already pushed you. I've already pushed you. are going back. I've already pushed you. So I, I, you're going to be on his outside. I want you to be about here. This is about 17 or 18. He's going to have the broom behind him. The broom's on the inside. What happens on the over route? If we get zone, if this makes sense to you, if we get zone, we don't want the receiver to have to chop his feet and then break across on the overs. Does this make sense? Because the good corner and free aren't even looking at him. They're looking at who pulls the trigger, aren't they? Aren't they? 
So we don't want to chop the over against zone. This make any sense? Remember how we, you, we spent forever last night on the speed turnout? It's the same here. He's got to be thinking two steps ahead. He knows he's going to go straight across. So to start him out, we'll put his left foot up. He's looking to and through, through beyond you. Now, can I bend over this far? Bitchin'. So when I say snap it, right, right, get that foot straight and get that damn broom on the ground and get straight across the field. We don't want to see a bow. He don't like that. He wants to see you straight across. Okay, so we start at the end of the route. This is the over. He's got to get the right foot around just like a speed turn, Kyle. Look at me, because you were here yesterday. I'll say, I'll say break. Look, look at me. As you throw the foot, throw the broom down, straight across. DB, just try to keep coming for his, his outside shoulder. You can jog it. On break. Set. Break. There's your instant separation. Come on back. See that? Look how that speeds you up into the route. You can ask him. It's almost like the old days of of doing the, the extra tubing drills, except I think this makes you actually feel it or not. I mean, couldn't you feel yourself faster out of the break or not? Yeah, well, it feels a lot better. Well, yeah, but the point is I wanted to see, and we went to overcoach everything. Come on up, Robbie. I'm it makes it better when I take it off. This yes. Get on his outside shoulder. You still looking two through and beyond him. Okay. So when I say, when I say break, yes? Throw that, just like the speed turn, throw that foot as you get the room down. You want to go straight across the field. Free safety was backed up. Now, here's phase two. Based on how far the free was, free can move over. Now, we're using the broom to speed up the acceleration on the, on, after the stem. I'm into the break. Then you're going to come through here, and then after you're down a few steps, and you can straighten it up, right? You're bombing across the field when he's about here, start to come for him. Now you see him coming, yes? Yes? You want to reduce the stick. You want to reduce the broom again and split the corner into safety. So it's the route and it's the play tag. Off the over route, off the seven step drop. Here we go, set. Break. Good, 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 good. over route they've dropped their free down to rob they're, they're guessing with you some people do this out of variation also cover four but you're going to end up on an island with that corner and if you can beat them on the over it is over set break yeah see he's fall step back oh he's hopping there he fall step back it's just like you saw in the lion's tape huh if you were standing at his feet which i know you all were but he did when i said break he just turned his foot, right? Throw the foot, throw the broom. Get gaining ground into the over. This is really a great route. You can ask Doug what's nice about this. A lot of high schools and small colleges don't run seven step, but they don't understand. This ain't that throwing that deep. The idea, you can push the defenders a lot further. You can throw over the backers, but under the DBs. So the kid doesn't have to have a rocket arm in. Hell, the guy's coming straight across the field, 18 yards or so. Okay, here we go. Final stem of the over, the use of the brooms. Set. Hit. Good. I'm back. Must have been a hell of a fast catch. Finally, the out. So we're in pretty good shape for him. You go on over. Give me Robbie and Kyle here. Just stack your brooms up over here, man, but come on up here. Against any, get this on the tape, against any zone coverage, if we're throwing the out, throwing the quick out, or what they call the short six in Detroit off a of five step, yes. When I scan, I see a corner free, eyes inside, we never want to chop the out. So it doesn't matter if it's a quick out or a deep route, we're going to speed turn it. Yes? So what I want you guys to do. 
you're already into the route, so you're going to come up to about here. You're going to put the right foot up. You're going to be on a slight angle. Come here as the DB for me. Okay, stop, because I was going for your outside leg. I'm looking two through and beyond you, right? When I say snap, no, no broom, right? I want you to throw the foot, throw the hand to the out, get that shoulder out of the way, and run out of bounds. Just bluff a throw, but I don't have to fake a catch. In fact, I don't even have to do that. You stand there. Yeah. Here we go. Snap. Snap. There's your separation right there. I'm back. Don't try to even turn up. All, 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 I, want is, all, I, want, all I want to see is a reduce of the hip and the shoulder. Here we go. Did you hear that? I mean, stand up. Yes. Yes. Hey, look at me. When I say snap, throw the right foot to the out. Hey, really reduce that hip and shoulder. Snap your eyes and your shoulder. Here we go. Set. Sit down. Good. Kyle's up. Pick up your brooms. Let's go. Let's go. Snap. See what that does? Accelerates you back to the ball. Set. Snap. The false step again. Throw that left foot. Just throw it. Don't drop it and then throw it. Kyle's up. Now. Give ourselves a little more operating space. Come on over a little bit. Still on a slight angle, still looking two through and beyond him. Right? Once he takes off, right? Like you're kind of crappy. Mm -hmm. End up where you're just a little behind him. Go ahead and walk, walk. Right when he's there. Now come walk it. And you know, you feel him, Kyle? Reduce the stick the other way. Up the field you go. Okay, here we go. Now the use of the broom on the out. The DB is late, play, or he's playing inside technique. The first use of the broom is to accelerate out of the cut on the speed turn, overcoaching the hips and the shoulder. Second one is playing tag on the inside defender because I was able to beat him. OK, here we go. Set. Snap. And tag him. Stay in bounds. Good. I'm up, Robbie. Here we go. You get a, I hope you're getting as jacked about the brooms as I am. I mean, this uh, you've got to be cutting edge. You ought to be flipping someday, huh? You'll be coming out with all this stuff. And then what's nice in the off season, like I told you guys before, you've got to have where guys are dying to come. Suddenly guys, well, maybe I'm not really that good at basketball this year. I ain't playing, you know? Because what happens, we lift, we do our stuff, but we always do football stuff too every day. Just a few minutes, but cutting edge, position specific. Okay, here we go. Emphasizing... Set. Snap. Good. And I know it's tough, but don't cut down your stride length either way when you turn it up. Last time, Kyle. Here we go. Set. I'm sorry. Ready? Snap! Yes! Turn it off, man. Here comes a fun one. And then we'll... This is not tied into scheme. What this is tied into, you got to use your eyes to run after the catch. So these are deep defenders, and that's an underneath one. Here's what's going to happen. Kyle's over here right by his dot, right where Tim likes him. Now, you can put the broom either way, but whichever way you got to play tag, you do. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to stand back here. This could have been a slant, skinny post, up. I don't care. You're in here. What's going to happen? One, two, or three of these guys are coming at you. Don't tuck your head like you caught it. I don't care. I've already caught it. You're just going to run exactly at Doug. Now, if Doug's coming by himself, you get on top of him. If you want to give him an eye fix aid, then reduce. Don't let him touch that shoulder. If he's coming, don't let him touch that one. There's another guy coming. So here he comes. If I see him coming, then obviously I want to I want to reduce the broom here and get straight up the field. You understand me? The, you, touchdown. the touchdown's a wall. Quarterback. quarterback is back there somewhere throwing this way. Gotcha. What's gonna happen? The guys I point to, 
Right? You do not take off at him till he's about here. All right? Now, maybe one of you coming, two of you coming, or all of you coming. So I may get a single reduce, I may get a double reduce, I may get three, I may get one. The guys I point to, let him go about three steps and then start coming. We'll go first about half speed. The receiver's eyes got to stare at the wall, but he cannot stare at me. All right, here we go. Set. Break. Good, good. You didn't have to play tag on the underneath guy because the underneath guy was not a factor. But you had to play tag on the corner. Excellent. Robbie, get your stick up there behind him. You're going next. Here we go. Set. Now, you can take off earlier. Now, you uh, feeling okay? Okay, set. Break. Good. Then he straightened back up after he played tag. Here we go. Coming a little closer, DJ, because I love you. Tell you what, DJ, that Garen's in. Uh, underneath. Ask me why I pulled I pulled you. Because you brought us three more packages of sweet rolls this morning. <laughs> if you had your ass to be out there after we're gone. I need somebody faster. No, it's not that. I just I want you to be able to see this too, you know. Okay, here we go. Set. Break. Oh, reduced on one, but you forgot about the corner and closed up. You, you reduced on the free, but not on the corner. First Sergeant Wayne, uh, uh, you man. Company B25. Get your head out of your ass. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Now, let's see how smart and stare straight ahead, Kyle. I want you to do what I do. Yes? I want you to overrun on top. You run like hell to get to his near shoulder. Okay, here we go. Set. Break. There it is. <laughs> Try it again, Kyle. You did right on the first and you should have reduced the other way on uh, Garen. No. Trying to spoil me, see, trying to be nice. No, you have to be nice. You already brought us the sweet rolls. Yes, it does. Here we go. We're playing tag. Eyes straight ahead. Top shoulder. Overrun. Flying to the near shoulder. Set. Break. Good. You didn't have to tag on Garen because Garen was not a factor. Excellent. Turn it off.